Windows 11 is here, and this is everything you need to know. Or maybe I should have said everything you need to know before it launches, because Microsoft today officially pulled back the curtains. Windows 11 is here. It is announced. It is coming. And this is going to be everything you need to know about Windows 11 before it arrives or as it arrives. And so let's just dive in here and we're going to start looking through it. So Microsoft officially announced Windows 11. And as the leak suggested and the videos that I did, it was pretty spot on. So you can see here, this is going to be your new desktop. Now this is with a dark mode. I personally think the dark mode looks better, um, but this is the new start menu experience that will be arriving in Windows 11. So when is it going to arrive? So that's the first bit of important information. If you are a Windows insider, you're going to get your hands on it at the end of June or next week. If you're listening to this today, the video goes live. It's next week, but it's at the end of June is when Microsoft will make the first official insider preview build available, which means you need to be on the beta program to do that or the Windows insider, but the beta or the dev channel, I should say specifically get into the dev channel. That is the fastest ring release. And that is what you're going to need to do to get your hands on this. Microsoft said initially they're not going to let you download just the ISO or the installation media. It's going to be coming through the update mechanics. They will eventually release an ISO, but that is not coming yet. When will everybody else get it? Everybody else is going to get it in the fall. So you can be looking forward to that in the fall. And so just keep that in mind here. Other big things that are coming in Windows 11 are widgets. Widgets are making their way to sort of the desktop. There's a new widget desktop button that you press and that panel opens and it does slide across and you can move it around. You can also move the widgets around, but you can't move them to your desktop. But this is going to be a feed of information. It's also going to be extensible, meaning that it'll be opened up to third party developers. They can add their own widgets and be able to do all sorts of fun stuff. Now, let's say you want to install Windows 11. You're this far into the video, you're like, this is good. How much is it going to cost me? Well, if you have Windows 10 today, it's going to cost you nothing. Uh, Microsoft is going to continue the upgrade for free process. So as long as you have an active license of Windows 10, you should be able to upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Now, if you're on the commercial side of the equation, things are a little bit different, but mostly the same. As long as you have a volume licensing agreement in place, all of your Windows 10 licenses will move over to Windows 11. So there, in theory, should be no additional charging uh, to access Windows 11 in the enterprise environment. Of course, Microsoft could tinker with volume licensing, but leave initially that is what we are hearing is that's how it's going to play out now there's i mean microsoft has really kind of scrubbed across the entire ui here we don't actually have a build yet like i said we'll get the first build next week but this is our first look at the updated settings panel microsoft didn't go into a lot of detail during their presentation to talk about settings but you can see here, especially on the left side, it's much more colorful and vibrant and, and brought to life. It's not so much flat uh, as we had seen in previous iterations of Windows 10. Now, speaking of Windows 10, it's going to be a little awkward this fall. I already mentioned that Windows 11 will be arriving this fall. Microsoft's actually going to be shipping a build of Windows 10 this fall. So in the fall, they're actually going to release Windows 10 21 H2 and Windows 11. They're going to be launching two OSs effectively at the same time, which is a little odd, and I think that's definitely a first for the company. But either way, you'll be able to download Windows 10 21H2 or Windows 11 if you were upgrading to that. Now, speaking of upgrades, Microsoft has finally heard the feedback. They've finally heard all of the complaints about updates and upgrades and everything else going on with Windows 11, so or Windows 10 upgrades. So with Windows 11, they're making some pretty big changes. They're going to one big update per year. That is one update per year, and it'll be supported. The life cycle will be for 24 months for consumers. Now, if you're on the enterprise side of life, it gets even better. They are going to support it for 36 months. That is a big change and one that is going to make things so much easier. So you're getting one update per year. And it's going to be supported for 36 months, not 30 months to force you into other upgrades, but 36 months. You get three years of support for lifecycle support. Uh, so that is coming. Now, the one thing we do not know yet, we do not know yet about the long-term servicing channel that is popular in Windows 10 for devices like uh, x-ray machines or CT scans or things like that that run a long-term stable build of the OS that is effectively disconnected from the internet. So keep that in mind. 
Speaking of the internet, two major changes here. First, the thing you see up on the screen right there, Microsoft is integrating Teams. Skype is no longer shipping with Windows. Teams is the future, and Teams is what you're going to be using to chat with people and to call people directly from the, effectively, the taskbar. This is a, there's another big change here to the system requirements, and you'll see why I led with Teams, is that with Windows 11 Home, internet connections are required. You have to have an internet connection. And more importantly, you also have to have a Microsoft account. They're going to force you to sign in to basically complete the logon experience or the authentication. No longer is there an offline mode. This is going to create some turmoil for some people because they either A, don't have internet connection, which I, I suspect is probably a low number, but they're definitely out there. But I think there's a larger population that doesn't want their desktop OS tied to a, a personality or an, an MSA. But that's what Microsoft is forcing. Now, the side like banter or whatever you want to call this is that Teams will be automatically authenticated with that MSA. So Microsoft is effectively going to artificially grow their team's consumer usage base by forcing this upon everybody who's using Windows 11, which I already know is not going to sit well with many people. But either way, that's how it's going to work. I'm sure some people will find workarounds uh, to disable Teams functionality and to get, you, get that off uh, or basically log out and deauthenticate from that. But out of the box, Microsoft is going to get a lot of uh, Teams users this way, very clearly just pushing that along. Um, here we go. You can see some of the new productivity features. This is called a, a new Snap UI. If you hover over the Maximize button, this is a really cool feature that I, probably one of the best improvements, at least in my mind, um, is that when you hover over that, you'll be able to snap the windows based on the image that you click. More importantly, Windows 11 will now remember where you left it. So if you have snap groups and you bring those apps back to life or bring, you know, restore them, um, they will stay in the same snap, sap, snap, sap snap group I've said it too many times now uh screwing me up but thankfully windows will remember their position it's only taken 35 years of windows uh to remember where you left your window and microsoft will put it right back there when you open it up it's about time it is absolutely about time a um, couple other things here android apps are coming to windows 10 android apps are coming to windows 10 but not like you think these aren't google play apps so microsoft has teamed up with amazon to work uh, on bringing Android apps to the Windows Store, or basically Windows itself. And so if there's an Amazon Android app, then it will run on Windows. What they're doing is some big updates to the store here. And you can see Amazon apps on the, on the Android apps on Windows. And so effectively, you can install any Amazon Android app on Windows. And it runs in a VM with a new Android subsystem for Linux, which if you recognize that naming scheme, it runs in parallel with the Windows subsystem for Linux. And the app runs in a VM and it runs on your desktop. You don't really notice the difference, but this is a big step. Microsoft has said that they are working with other other developers or other uh, companies to bring more Android apps to the, to the platform. Obviously, I think we all want them to work with Google, but Google has the Google Play requirement and Google Play services, which as of right now, I think that's creating a bit of friction. But either way, you'll at least be able to run some Android apps uh, on the desktop, which is a good thing. Microsoft is also making some pretty significant updates to the store, which you can see here. This is the first look at the new Microsoft Store. They're basically allowing any single type of application into the store. If it can, if it can run on Windows, it can be put into the store. And if you bring your own content delivery network, uh, Microsoft Microsoft will not charge you any fees. So you can effectively put apps into the store and sell them yourselves and not char not not lose any money to a Microsoft tax. Uh, Microsoft is calling these third-party commerce platforms and it's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good thing if you're a developer because then you can effectively roll your own or you can take advantage of Microsoft services and then they'll charge you a little tax to do that. Also, stories, yeah, like from Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and everything else and, and Snapchat and everything else are coming to the store. Um, yeah, you can make that for what you will. Um, there's also a new file explorer, although Microsoft didn't really show it off. We pulled a, a screen grab here. This is the new file explorer experience that is going to be coming. Also, this is done during a touch demonstration. Microsoft has not forgot about touch either. They're, they've improved larger touch points, um, and there's also different touch experiences. Basically, if there's a, a trackpad gesture, it now works on the panel or the pane of glass inside of Windows. So they haven't completely gotten rid of touch, uh, but they have made some changes. You can definitely see a different look for File Explorer here. And so you can kind of plow back through here. I, do, I want to jump back to the minimum system requirements because there's a big one that I left out. Microsoft talked a lot about gaming and how Windows 11 will enable improve gaming experiences. They're actually bringing some Xbox technology like direct storage and auto HDR to the desktop. 
But there's a big caveat here. So part of the minimum system requirements are it's a dual core machine. Like I said, home needs internet and MSA required also requires TPM 2.0. Now this is a really big deal because TPM is a security feature that most machines have with a major exception. A lot of gaming motherboards don't ship with a TPM chip. It might have a TPM header where you can attach one, but a lot of them don't, which means that everybody who has a gaming PC or more effectively, if you built your own PC, you've really got to be looking at this TPM 2.0 uh, requirement to see if you're actually going to be able to upgrade to Windows 11. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck on Windows 10. Microsoft says that they, they think that this is the right move, um, but I suspect that there's going to be some feedback here from a lot of people because like myself, I'm not actually sure if my high-end machine that I have upstairs, which is a, a 7900X, a 10-core, 20-thread Intel chip, will actually support this. It's only two years old. And I don't, I can't remember if my motherboard has a TPM chip because I built it as a high production or, or high processing box, not necessarily a workstation. Workstation PCs will all have the TPM because it's a security feature, but this is going to be interesting one um, that we need to be paying attention to. And so I think it looks pretty good. I think Microsoft did a pretty good job. They had some issues during the event. Their internal streaming platform completely collapsed. And actually, a lot of people ended up watching restreams on YouTube um, because Microsoft, they couldn't figure out streaming. It was honestly just kind of embarrassing for Microsoft that they couldn't stream their own uh, launch event. Either way, I think Windows 11 looks pretty good. It's going to be free for the vast majority of people. It brings a lot of good enhancements. I think the UI looks pretty good. It's going to take some time to get some experience with it. Keep in mind that the first builds are going to ship next week. Keep in mind um, that it's not going to ship until the fall if you meet all the system requirements, which goes to the next point. There is a tool that you can download to test to see if your machine does meet the minimum system requirements. Unfortunately, it doesn't work all that well. Mine says my machine is not does not meet the requirements, but it doesn't tell you why, which is another issue uh, within itself. So just keep all that in mind that there's a lot of changes coming with Windows 11. This video has really brought you up to speed what Microsoft talked about over the past several hours that it's had through a lot of different briefings. And so there's a lot of big changes, Android apps, a complete opening of the store, a new start menu, a new visual design language, rounded corners everywhere. There's a lot going on and Windows 11 isn't even here yet, but it's launching very soon. And that's everything you need to know about Windows 11. And make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this channel is me.